Uh, just a quick intro, my name is Chirag, I'm from product management team, and with me, uh, we have a gentleman from software team as well, who is going to cover on the inside, inside architecture. So, with that, um, I'll just start with, is it working? All right, this is working. So, just want to go over with the quick uh, uh, reintroduce about the inside architecture, which is one of the unique stuff we have on the SLX uh, platform. It's basically what is inside architecture, right? So it provides the uh, the SLX uh, platform is based on the KVM infra uh, environment. So what does it do? It allows uh, to host the application under the guest VM. So with that application, uh, with that it also provides the 10 gig dedicated path from the data plane to the guest VM to do the monitoring, network traffic, and do end-to-end -end, uh, network performance tests as well. And top of that, it has uh, resources protection as well. So with that, it basically completely isolated from the um, SLX OS. So there is no um, impact on the SLX OS mm -hmm. while running on the guest VM application. All right. So I need to little bit uh, run a little bit quick because we are running out of time. So please hold off me on if you have any question related to the inside architecture. Okay. All right. So here is the uh, architecture view. Uh, I'm giving the example here of the chassis. So if you see on the top, there is a two management modules, and it's a modular chassis. So it has a, there is a two management module on the top. On the left hand side, if you see. Uh, we have MM1, we call, which is, which is, a, which is in an active ma uh, management module. On the right hand side, <coughs> it's uh, management two, which is a standby module. And the bottom is the line card. So if you see, there is a KVM where we have uh, two VMs running on top of it. One is we call the SLX VM, which is the software, uh, uh, SLX software running on top of it. And the second one is the guest VM. Now both VMs are isolated to each other. So that allows the customer to run the, any application under the guest VM. And there is a, from the line card, which is the network processor, if you see that's the ASIC, there is a dedicated 10 gig pipe from the ASIC to the guest VM. So which allows to gather the data, tap the data directly from the ASIC to the guest VM to do further monitoring, analytic, or do any kind of a performance there. Yeah, I would just like to add, this is a kind of a very unique feature, mm -hmm. because what we have done, you know, a lot of vendor will allow you to run, say, a third-party VM, right? Which is just a vanilla VM running. But here, what we have done in the hardware, we can actually tap all your user data traffic that is going through your switch fabric. And using all the features of SLX OS VM, you can actually tap any packet that you want and steer it with the third-party VM. Now you can run your analytics software and all those things on your third-party VM, and you have a pretty good you know, solution for your network analy analytics right on that particular box. Right on the switch. Right, right on, on the, the same hardware. So we've got a VM, it's on the switch, we've got a 10 gig pipeline into the CPU, yes. the ASIC. Right. ASIC. ASIC. So now I've got a 10 gig output I can feed into the VM. Right. Yes. Now my switch might have 48 10 gig ports, right. so I need to do some filtering, so it's not a... Right. You know, it's so, not a yeah. visibility fabric like some people might think, but it's a, it could be a, a, an effective replacement for what most people do with SPAN. Yes. So they go in, they say, send this 10 gig port, and then a, connected to it is a Linux box with a 10 gig NIC. So instead of finding a server and a 10 gig NIC, and then putting some software on there like a Bro IDS or some sort of PCAP, you can just do all this on the switch. Yeah, it, it's much more uh, uh, sophisticated than that, mm. because what you have, one of the switch fabric port is literally connected over the, you know, the internal plane bus. internally inside right. the box. So what you're actually doing is redirecting right. an ASIC and you can actually, IO channel. So an yeah. ASIC has X number of... You can take traffic connect. from any of the ports right. and steer it programmatically to this particular port that rest. will go to the third party. And then VM. that can be fed up to a VM actually right. running on the switch. So this SLX 9850, how much CPU juice does it have? Does it have like a you know, eye-popping sort of CPU architecture? Yeah, so these are all uh, uh, x86 Broadwell CPU. Yeah. So 
uh, uh, these are pretty pretty high performance multi core CPUs. Yes. Depending on the platform, we'll be using it. For example, in this particular one, you see the management card as well as the line card. Mm. Management card each has Broadwell with eight CPU cores. Right. And the line cards have four CPU cores. Do you want to name some apps that I could put into that yeah. VM? So let's just make so, this really directly applicable. Would you be running something like Bro IDS? Yes, or? yes. So I have a following I'm slide. Sorry. We oh. are covering that part. But you are you, you brought a really good point that the value it will add is basically does it reduce the cost of operation. Yep. So you and the top of that, if you see these 10 gig pipes are completely isolated from the control plane. So the, it's not even affecting your control plane traffic. Uh -huh. There is a separate control plane traffic going on on a separate 10 gig pipe. So this is dedicated pipe for your data traffic. Right. That you're is not going to take out the operational. Yes. What you're saying there is the switch isn't going to collapse because you're suddenly spiking the Absolutely. CPU or you're overrunning yes. the CPU's architecture. It's going to, it's isolated. So, so it's safer. Yeah. yeah treat it like, uh, you know, this is your kind of like a tool infrastructure yes. inside, yeah. which is uh, like segmented so that your mission critical control plane traffic, BGP and all yeah, of that. I'm just reading it back to you yeah, just yeah. to make sure I'm getting it right. You're absolutely yeah. on the right, uh, right yep. track. So it's basically not affecting any of that. So that way both of that get like their own performance. Yep. So no disruption to the routing. Yeah. So same like your ecosystem yeah. in the same suite, no, no, you yeah, can yeah. get that. So here is the, I just wanted to give a view of uh, across the SLX platform. So we just now, uh, uh, in the previous slide, we talked about the SLX uh, chassis, which is modular, but we have the same uh, capability on the fixed form as well. So it's basically same, but this was the modular. So that's why we have a separate 210 gigabyte. However, I wanted to add one more point. In modular chassis, you have a two modules, right? Management MM1 and MM2. So it has a ability to run the guest VM at the same time, even though your management module one is active and management two is standby, even on the standby, you can still use the guest VM and you can uh, tap the data and you can do all kinds of sort of things at the same time. So that's the biggest advantages. Yeah. I have examples on the following slide. I'll just show you. Just yeah. but, one, one question regarding yeah. to that. Did you put a load generator on one of the VMs? Can you generate yes, I'll show you. high loads there? Yes, I'll show you that. You mean to do the performance test? Yeah. yeah, I'll show you that. So this is what I was referring to. So if you see, I'm, I'm taking the example of SLX 9850 chassis, which is modular, where you see uh, uh, we have a management one and, and on the standby we have a um, uh, guest VM running as well. So I'm hosting application where on the left hand, on the right hand side, if you see management one, where I have a log test application, uh, Splunk and Persona running under the Docker. So you can run the Docker on top of the guest VM, and then each application you can run under each of this container. That's the value uh, it will add. And the Persona tool, which allows you to generate the 10 gig amount of traffic to do the performance test from your leaf to all the way to the edge or leaf to leaf. So that gives you the performance result. As well as you can use the log stash to get the syslogs directly from the, from the switch. Spl same Splunk is used to offload all your statistics information that will provide that. But besides that, on the standby, you can still use that guest VM to monitor and tap the data. So you can use the Wireshark application or you, and using, and we allow VNC as well. So using the VNC, you can directly Look, um, uh, open the uh, GUI-based application of Wireshark. So that was the example I want on the use here. Second thing, here is the list of application we tested and validated. So as of now, we started as uh, uh, in the previous slide we saw, right? The Docker was running on the uh, on the guest VM, and we spin up multiple container, and with, within a container, we host a personal application to do the uh, performance test. And then we supported starting on the Puppet as well, Logs test recently. Persona or Sponge is very useful to do the uh, performance test. Off Sponge is very useful if there is an ARP attack. Google Chrome and is one of the stuff we also support. So within a guest VM, you can run the Google Chrome, open the, uh, your mail, and then attach the PCAP file, send it to anywhere, whichever you want. Wireshark and this T-Shark command line, all these are part of the package. So that, you know, with, with Persona, how much 
where you are able to generate from a traffic perspective. We have the following next uh, uh, demo on that one that you'll see. So I'll, I'll set it up and, and run and show you what we can get. Um, a couple of things in there. Remember we said it's a 10 gig hardware path in there. So if I've got a full 100 gig fabric, I'm not going to be able to do sure. 100 gigs all the way through there. But my testing, I'm doing easily doing about seven and a half gigabit. I'm pretty sure if I talk to Nick later on, he'll know how I can squeeze that <laughs> yeah. further to get closer to 10. So kudos to you guys for putting perf sonar in there. That's sure. And if one thing I want to make sure, like you know, yeah. uh, we try <laughs> to uh, guide our customers. We don't. Uh, uh, promote this as any like you know mm. the replacement for a server or an appliance this is more for the network operations like day-to-day -day tasks like do like uh, you know packet capture and monitoring yep. uh you know like these are the tools stuff. these yeah. are these tools i'm looking at these tools and going these are the tools that i use because Correct. i've got no money hey, exactly. right and i can go and put these on uh, my vm on a switch and i don't have to right. raise a purchase order i don't right. have to seek approval this is not a replacement to mm. put like a palo alto or like <laughs> something like that we don't say like you know turn it into yep. a security appliance or anything like that so we hear a lot of improvement, like it improves a lot of on the day-to-day -day network operation. That's what we hear. In yeah, this is, the, this is very much a day it's two. Right, yes. I've, got a, I've got a favorite unicorn I'm riding around. What, everything you're talking about is really hitting in some messages that make me happy. You're really focusing on what I call day one and day two. So much of what we normally talk about is day zero. Here's what you want to buy, flashy That's chrome right. tailpipes and, and happy ideas yeah. and you know, strategy and futures that don't ever get delivered. What you're talking about here is making my day one, day two. Yes. So I don't hate you after I've bought the product. That's the point. After I've bought the product, if you know what I'm saying. So. Also, ARP spinage is a great term. This is. <laughs> never heard before. Uh, Oh. So that was the quick <coughs> the inside architecture, uh, architecture overview. I have, sorry, I have to rush a little bit, uh, but I hope you find it useful. And uh, if you have any questions, please hold up. Thank you. Thank you.